Hi, welcome to Hard Boil Synthesis, Lecture 18, where today's the day we are going to answer the question, the one we've been waiting for for 18 lectures now, of whether or not catnip is 10 times more effective than DEET by doing a proper meta-analysis. Last lecture we did an average and a weighted average, but now we're going to step into the more conventional models of meta-analysis. Most importantly, the random effects model. And just to catch you up on what I've been up to now for hours and hours and hours and hours, which has been to um, compare studies that use catnip as a repellent and use DEET as a repellent and compare how well they perform against mosquitoes. And there's a claim in social media that catnip is 10 times more effective than DEET. And so today we will actually begin to start thinking about that claim more deeply and provide a quantitative estimate of whether or not that's true. And the way I'm going to achieve that estimate is to do a random effects meta-analysis uh, before we kind of, I kind of already have an idea because I did an average and a weighted average, but to really establish confidence with the aggregated outcome, you need to do a random effects meta-analysis. What's the difference between a fixed effect and a random effect meta-analysis? If you remember the fixed effect meta-analysis, uh, we essentially, we do a weighted average, right? So we account for the sampling error within studies. So studies with small sample sizes tend to over or underestimate an effect. Um, and so we want to minimize their impact when we take an average across all studies. A random effect model, though, takes it a step further. It tries to account for an additional layer of variability the between study variability. And so it adds a little variance component to each one of those weights. And this variance component is meant to estimate um, variability across studies. And so it's a kind of a different type of statistical model in a sense that we are no longer assuming that each study is um, a sample of a single effect, but now we assume that there are uh, many effects out there. We don't know what these are. And so we try to cook in uh, that variability associated with sampling at that level. So we kind of have a hierarchical model here where now we have sampling error occurring at um, among studies rather than just occurring within studies. I'm going to make a better case for the fixed effect random effect model in later lectures. But my goal today is just to finally just start testing the claim. The whole thing that kindled the course to begin with was whether or not catnip is 10 times more effective than DEET. Feel free to go watch lecture one to see what I mean by that. Um, I feel like I'm totally exhausted at this point, but I'm going to push through. Today's the day, and so my setup is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be using R to do analyses rather than Excel. In Excel, in the last lecture, we did the average, we did the weighted average, but now we need to do some proper meta-analyses. And so I'm going to use an R package called Metaphor. It really is the statistical package that does most heavy lifting of meta-analyses at this point. I don't think that's a crazy thing to say. Um, it just has incredible uh, functionality. Uh, we're going to make use of those functions and we're going to do the random effects meta-analyses. And so right here at the top is the R script using the metaphor package. Under here, the box, if everything is working right, is will be the numerical output of that function. So like there's just the raw, the averages. And then over here, I got this little plot, this little thing called a, like a forest plot or a variation of a forest plot where we're, I'm plotting the average um, and the confidence intervals of each of those averages. Now the confidence interval is a very versatile tool and it's used a lot in meta-analysis to make assessments of whether or not the pooled effect, the average, 
the old way to say it, the grand mean is um, null or um, si significant. Okay, I rather use the the uh, the way to describe it as being non-zero. So, with a confidence interval, you make a, a, an assessment of whether or not the overall effect is zero or non-zero, and you use confidence intervals for that. So the confidence intervals, if they overlap with the null effect, which is zero, um, it means that there's no evidence of a, an effect. In our case, it means that there's no evidence that, um, that catnip performs better than DEET or performs worse than DEET. There's just no evidence that they differ. If there's a positive grand mean, a positive pooled effect, um, it means that catnip is really doing better than DEET in terms of repelling mosquitoes. And then finally, if we have a negative effect uh, with confidence intervals that don't overlap with zero, um, it means that DEET is just doing way better than catnip in terms of repelling mosquitoes. Now with the uh, raw averages and the weighted average, we already um, seen that DEET seems to be like the more effective repellent than catnip. Uh, but those aren't proper meta-analyses. And so again, finally, we are just going to do the proper meta-analysis. Um, account for that between study variability and that helps us establish a greater confidence in making the overall assessment of whether or not catnip is truly better than DEET. <sighs> I mean, it feels like it's been so much up to this point just to do the one little analysis, little analyses. And so the way I got it set up here is I'm going to repeat what I did in the last lecture, I'm going to do a an average. I'm going to do a weighted average, fixed effect, meta analysis, and then finally I will do the 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 one, the one that we I've been waiting for. I don't know if you guys have been waiting for it of whether or not catnip is more effective than DEET, ten times more effective than DEET. And so I kind of scripted a bunch of stuff already. I preloaded a graphical package, ggplot2. Um, that's what's doing the forest plot here. And then we're going to modify a little table to change this, um, this plot with the three averages that we want. Um, I already loaded up the data set too. I cleaned up the data set just for this analysis here. I dropped everything, uh, every effect that did not include a proper comparison of between catnip and DEET. That's basically all I want right now. I collected a bunch of other stuff in that. Stuff with uh, negative controls, stuff with um, things other than DEET. Um, but I just want to just streamline it, streamline it for, for the, uh, for, uh, I'm totally out of breath, for what we want to uh, do today, which is finally answer the question of whether um, catnip is super awesome at repelling mosquitoes. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write the um, quick function in metaphor to do a raw average. So I'm going to bamboozle, bamboozle it to not do a meta-analysis. And then I'm going to slowly build the meta-analysis model, ending with the final random effects meta-analysis. So I, I'm just going to jump into it. So RMA is the little function that we use to uh, estimate the grand mean. D was the column name for all our hedges DFX sizes, all the contrast between catnip and DEET in terms of um, magnitudes of repellency effects. We want to tell it where this day D comes from. We want to tell it what model to use to um, weight studies. I think it's method, yes. And we're going to assume a fixed effect, 
right? So we're not going to include this little uh, between study um, a variance component in the model yet. And then finally, I have to trick, trick the function to just do a raw average. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to tell it that each study should be weighted equally. I already know there's 128 effect sizes in the data set. There's 128 rows in my data set that compare repellency with catnip and repellency with DEET. And basically, I think that this is all it takes, really. Let me double check. We got D. So this model here is just telling metaphor to do a grand mean average across all effects. This part here is telling it to treat effect each effect equally as you would do in a regular average. I mean, not accounting for the within study sampling error um, that we typically model in the uh, weighted regression. So let's see if this works. Nice. All right. Uh, let me check to see if you guys can see this. You can. All right. So the just a regular old-fashioned average is indicate is negative. <clears throat> let me put that in our plot. Let's just call this average. Put the mean in there. It is negative. And looking at the confidence intervals. Um, it is non-zero. So if we would have just taken a straight up regular old fashioned average of all the effects, we would conclude that DEET it performs way better than catnip in terms of repelling mosquitoes. We knew that already. We did it with Excel. Um, <clears throat> and so let's plot this. And then uh, let me check to see. Yes. Okay. And uh, yes. All right. I'm just always nervous that uh, you guys can't see what I'm up to. Um, okay. So the average, right, is providing um, information on the performance of catnip. And, it, and if we just take the regular vanilla average of all these effects, which you should not be doing, <laughs> right? Uh, we would conclude that DEET is way better at repelling mosquitoes than catnip. All right. The next thing is to um, not assume that each effect size is, has um, equal representation in the average, but now modify their weighting relative to their sensitivity to sampling error. So again, studies with few sample sizes um, tend to over or underestimate the effect. And so we want to minimize their impact. And so here, rather than coding each effect with a weight of equal to one, now its weight is going to be the reciprocal variance associated with that effect. And I think all that is, is var d. All right. So other model was just regular average. Now we have a weighted average, also known as a fixed effect meta-analysis. If I did it right, let's see what it says. Okay, so this is similar to the Excel analysis we did with the uh, weighted regression, uh, weighted uh, mean. The values are going to differ because in the last lecture, I just averaged across all the effects that I had. But in this case, I'm just averaging across the effects that compare DEET versus catnip. And so I'm going to plug in these values into my little data frame here to plot it. But again, it's indicating, although at a different magnitude, 
that um, Deet is still performing better than Catnip. Oof. Still performing better than Catnip as a uh, repellent. Run, let's check the plot here. Okay, there we go. So we got our uh, average. We got our weighted average. Okay, so now the estimate actually shrank quite a bit. So accounting for the within study variability are the magnitude of difference between catnip and DEET is that much more smaller. Indicating that a lot of studies were overestimating the effect due to sampling error. At least that's kind of how I see it. All right, this is it. This is the last one where we do a meta-analysis. I think I, I'm always nervous about calling a fixed effect meta-analysis a meta-analysis because it's, it's missing the hallmark of a true meta-analysis, which is accounting for the between study variability. And so I'm going to keep the same model, but I'm just going to modify the method. Method here is assuming a, a random effects component in the model. And this is going to modify all the weights. And modifying all the weights in a way that accounts for the variability estimated across studies. So this is a full-on proper meta-analysis. DL here just is an abbreviation for one way in which we could estimate that between study variance. There's actually many ways. Uh, DL is one of the original ones though. Again, using uh, methods that you could do by hand if you wanted to. Now we use uh, more, more sophisticated optimization methods, but um, back in the day, if you wanted to do a random effects meta-analysis, you know, things, things were um, simplified so that you could do things in Excel if you wanted to do or in uh, by hand. Without going into the, any of those details, the way the function is parameterized right now, we were going to do a full-on meta-analysis. And so let me have a look at this one last time. Okay, this is it. 18 lectures, I don't know how many hours, almost 20 hours of me sitting in front of here talking to you guys, talking nonsense, gibberish for, <laughs> um, for hours just to run this one line of analyses. And I'm excited, I'm nervous. I'm not really nervous. I mean, uh, what, what am I saying? I'm just like, uh, I feel like this part is always underwhelming. You just run it and you're like, nah, all right, that's the average. And often for ecology, you know, the average, the average pooled effect across studies is not really that much interesting. What we're more concerned with is explaining variability across studies, finding explanations for variability across studies, not the consensus model. Do, do all the studies agree? Or are they all consistent in, in this prediction? And so, okay, let's go back to the simulations. I'm just talking nonsense now. I might as well just go on with it. This is it right here. I'm going to run the line. This is going to be a proper meta-analysis. And I will be able to finally address or answer the question, is catnip 10 times more effective as a repellent than DEET? I feel like I need to celebrate. Well, yeah, let's just get, let's just get it done. Run run it. Okay, there we go. All right, so the effect is small. So now I jumped into another magnitude. It's positive. And, oh wait, okay. So this is not at all what I anticipated. Uh, I need to think about this. Okay, so the Overall pulled effect is now slightly positive, indicating that catnip um, performs at a similar level as DEET. And because the confidence intervals overlap with zero, 
that means there's no evidence that there's a difference between catnip and DEET in terms of repellency against mosquitoes. I need to think about that. I guess, you know, this is it. This is what I've been waiting for. Let me plug in these numbers here so we, we get the visualization. Okay, I, I'm a little surprised, to be honest with you. My, uh, my gut feeling about this is that there's clearly more to it than, than this. Like getting a, this isn't like a proper normal result. You know, a proper null result would have been if I would have done the analyses of um, catnip versus the negative controls, where we asked the question, does catnip re repel mosquitoes? This is a different, this is against a positive control, a baseline for comparison, DEET. And so a null here is, is a positive outcome in that catnip, there is no evidence that catnip does not perform worse than DEET. Now it's evidence that catnip does not perform better than DEET. It just means it performs similarly. I mean, that's amazing. That's really amazing. Let me just uh, plot this stuff here. Uh, okay, let me check to see if you could see that. Oh, I didn't change the name. Let's call it meta-analysis. Replot it. Well, let's discuss this uh, finding a little bit. I am just like blown away, to be honest with you. Everything from this point was indicating that um, catnip was not doing better. Let me check to see if you see this. You do. Everything was indicating that catnip was not doing better, right? If we did our average, we did our weighted average, but doing a proper meta-analysis, we, we can now conclude with some confidence that catnip is actually doing just as well as DEET. I'm... I don't know if I'm shocked. I'm just like, I, I feel like I got, just got kicked in the gut <laughs> where I just, I don't know what to do. I, this was a, like a surprise sucker punch and, um, it's exciting. I mean, this is like the, the whole point is to, um, to, to make it to this stage and to find out that catnip is actually doing pretty good as DEET. That's amazing. I mean, congrats catnip. Um, I was just, I, I, I feel like I've, I've beaten you up so much throughout these lectures. I just feel so rude. I've, I've been so rude to you, friend. <laughs> I've been so rude to you, friend. Catnip, you are, you are doing just as well as deep. Okay. Well, there you go. Um, before ending this lecture, future lectures, we're going to try to explore variability and establish confidence in this outcome here. And so I'm going to test for things like publication bias, variability across studies, and then test predictors. If you remember this pooled meta-analysis, this pooled this um, pooled effect size, the grand mean, it's just averaging across mosquito species. It's averaging across dosages, across experimental design. I need to explore whether or not those things are moderating this outcome. It may be that under some situations, Catnip does actually perform better than DEET. Um, but right now, as terms of like just homogenizing all that stuff and boiling it down to a single effect, catnip performs just as well as DEET. I mean, think about that. All right, I'm going to either go celebrate or just um, start working on the next lecture so that I can explore some of this variability. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Take it easy.